What does this piece of gyp rock, a napkin, sliver of cardboard, some old molding, and this random person's hand all have in common? More on that later. If you are planning a kitchen renovation and want to order kitchen cabinets, it's important to know how to measure your kitchen cabinets to get the process going for your designer. Having accurate measurements at the start of the process will help you down the line when there are less changes to be made because of improper measurements. Let me show you how to properly measure your kitchen so you can confidently take those measurements to any cabinet supplier. And don't worry, you don't need to be an artist to make this happen. I mean, look at this. This is my best drawing but I've been a kitchen designer for many years. Remember when I asked you about what all these things have in common? Well, these are all items that customers have brought their kitchen measurements to me written on, and I would advise you to get a piece of paper to do this and not draw it on a piece of cardboard or a piece of gyp rock or even your hand. These things are all difficult to put into a file and to keep track of, and your kitchen designer would like to have a piece of paper that they can put into a file and put away with all the other information that they need for you. I've seen so many people come in and bring me these type of items. I'm just like, oh, really? All you need to get started is a tape measure, a ruler, a piece of paper, and a pencil. That's it. The first step is to draw an outline of your kitchen as if you were looking down from the sky. Use a ruler and just draw lines. This doesn't need to be to scale because that's not really that important at this stage of the game, as long as they're somewhat accurate and neat. For my kitchen, it would look something like this. Where this wall is the wall that you see behind me. The next thing to do is to mark where the windows and doors are or any obstacles that might be in your way. To mark a window, this is the easiest way to do it. Just a little rectangle, and you can put a little W inside of it to indicate that it's a window, or a D to indicate that it's a door. As long as your designer has some way of knowing that that's a window, that's a door, or that's some other obstacle that's in the way. Next thing to do is start measuring. If you have a corner, this is the best place to start. Just put the tape measure in the corner and measure out. Now, when measuring to a window, measure to the outside of the trim. Keep all your measurements on the outside of the walls so that it's consistent all the way through. Be careful when you're using a tape measure upside down. This has cost me a few thousand dollars in the past because I'm looking at the measurement and I'm reading 83 instead of 38. This can cause a lot of problems, so just keep that in mind. When you're measuring windows or doors, it's best to measure them from the outside of the trim to the outside of the trim. So I would measure my window from outside to outside. Now the reason we do this is so that we allow for your designer to have space on either side of the window for larger trim or clearances for cabinets. It's important to measure along the wall as much as possible until you hit an obstacle where you can't. So I will measure this to my window trim. Keeping in mind that I have to add that measurement to the next measurement I'm gonna make. Now, I can't measure to my wall anymore because I have this obstacle in my way. So if that's the case, do your best to measure along the front of that obstacle to the next wall. It's important to be as accurate as I can be, but for the sake of a design layout, you don't need to be exactly precise. Remember, your cabinet supplier will most likely come in and confirm all these measurements, especially when you tear out maybe your old cabinets. So get as close as you can, but don't worry about being exact at this stage of the game. So I will measure this the best I can, considering that my walls might be not square, or I'm having trouble with my tape measure, or maybe I'm not used to measuring, and I'm not sure what all the little markings are between the inches. That's okay, do, as, do the best you can, get it close it's important to note the centers of your appliances, especially if the appliances aren't gonna be changing location. So if that's the case, measure to the center of your appliance as close as possible from your corner. On your drawing, indicate the center of that appliance by putting a C with a line through it. That's the universal sign for center. And indicate that it's coming from a wall. <laughs> we forgot to mention one thing. In the description of this video, there is a free PDF on how to measure your kitchen. It's my gift to you. Go ahead and grab that after you watch the video. It's important to keep your measurements to the outside of your drawing. That way everything is consistent. And all the notes or other information you can put inside the drawing. 
such as your appliance locations or if you want an island or things like that. It is also important to indicate the ceiling height of your room, so make that one of the last measurements that you take. When all is said and done, you should end up with a drawing that looks something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as you have pretty accurate measurements and a pretty clear indication of what your kitchen looks like with just the walls. Have an open mind for your designer to move things around and to locate things where they think it might be best. You might have an idea of what your kitchen should look like. A designer might have some different ideas, so keep an open mind to that as they go through the process of designing your new kitchen. The last thing that you need to do is measure all your appliances especially if you're keeping them. And if you are replacing your appliances, you should have them picked out beforehand so that your designer has all the measurements that they need. Most appliances such as ranges and dishwashers have standard measurements, but fridges are a different story. Your refrigerator has a custom size, height, width, and depth that is very important for you to indicate to your designer what that is. I've seen many installations go bad because the fridge comes in and it doesn't fit the opening. And this is because somebody didn't measure the fridge. That responsibility does rely on the person who's ordering your cabinets, but if you're the one installing it, it's very important to get that measurement. You've now just made things a whole lot easier for your designer to take this and convert it into this. way better than bringing in a piece of gyp rock with your measurements scribbled on it. And while this will do the trick in a pinch, I highly recommend at least converting this to paper because somebody's gonna have to. I hope that this quick tutorial was helpful for you to measure your kitchen. If you're getting new kitchen cabinets, I have an online design service that might be right for you. I supply 3D renderings, detailed floor plans, elevation perspectives, and I help you throughout the process to get the design that you want. So you can spend your time researching the cabinets and the colors and, and the trends that you wanna put into your kitchen, and I can take care of the design and layout process. There's a link in the description below that you can check out to see if this solution is right for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I've earned your thumbs up. Chances are you will like what I posted in the past and the videos I'm going to post in the future. And if that's the case, wow. Remember, you don't want to work in your kitchen. You want your kitchen to work for you.